Is the Clove Hitch Killer worth watching, or is it not? Hello everyone and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today I am taking a look at the 2018 movie, The Clove Hitch Killer. Now, this was for me an interesting movie, uh, one that I would recommend. I did like it, but I feel like it should have had more impact than it wound up having. Uh, in order to get into some more details of this while still remaining spoiler-free, let's get into the categories. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. So the plot of this one, I gave a 17 out of 25 points. I thought this was very much better than average as far as a plot goes. Uh, what we have is a movie that features an adolescent youth, a teenager by the name of Tyler, who is growing up in any town USA, very, very repressed, white, middle-class kind of environment, very church-going, very uh, scout-oriented, uh, you know, no swearing, everybody sits at the dinner table to eat dinner and talks about their day, and there's family time, and so on and so forth. Uh, and his parents are an integral part of that. Uh, <clears throat> there is, however, in the background... A, a history of the town that prior to him being born, there was a serial killer known as the Clove Hitch Killer and uh, leaving a signature Clove Hitch, uh, not uh, outside of the victim's houses or you know, at the crime scenes. And uh, it hadn't happened in 10 some odd years, uh, but uh, he begins to suspect that his father is the Clove Hitch Killer based on some materials that he found and kind of stumbled across and uh, just monitoring activity. So the movie is a bit of an investigation slash is he or isn't he? Uh, and his father is played by Dylan McDermott. Uh, overall, I mean, this is not new territory that we are treading here. Uh, we, I mean, just covered this with the Christopher Lloyd movie, I Am Not a Serial Killer. Uh, that wound up going in a totally different direction. So although I did feel like the plot was better than average, I didn't give it as many points as I ordinarily I think I would have, simply because I feel like there was two major avenues that this movie could have uh, walked down. And while staying as spoiler free as possible, I'm going to be very careful with my wording here because I'm not going to be uh, saying whether or not his father was or was not the serial killer. Uh, that is up to you to find out if you decide to watch this movie. But uh, I think that there are, uh, it could have used the setting of middle class repression as a counterbalance and a contrast to uh, the serial killer storyline and provided uh, and made the serial killer aspect of this all the more impactful. Uh, for a good example of that, see Summer of 84. I thought that did a magnificent job of providing a contrast that elevated the serial killer portion of the movie. Or the serial killer aspect of this movie could have simply been background. It could have been a catalyst to set things in motion that had actually doesn't wind up having anything to do with anything, but allows the setting itself to become the scary element of this or the disturbing element of this or the shocking element of this, that it would allow the white middle class repressed church going society to clash with an adolescent of coming of age, going through puberty, going through discovery, and having that judgmental aspect with no uh, outlets and no uh, open-minded ears to listen and have that just be a browbeating element that provides him with all this safety, but still no safety to be found and the the steamrolling effect that that has. I think that's much more realistic. I myself experienced a fair bit of that. And I know that there are many, many youths and adolescents growing up right now that are experiencing this or have experienced this. And I think if you follow it to a dark, uh, you know, dramatic, uh, but dark place, uh, that could serve very well as a shocking, disturbing 
horrific type movie and i think that having the serial killer history and the you know wondering if his father is that it would at least set the storyline in motion uh to provide that aspect to it uh so those are i think two main areas that this movie could have walked down and i feel like it kind of walked down the middle between them so that you wound up having the setting not be as uh <clears throat> as soul crushing as I think it could have been. And you wound up with the serial killer aspect having not as much punch as it certainly should have. So by treading down the middle, it wound up being watered down on both fronts. And I, I kind of gave the plot a 17 out of 25. I, I feel like it should have been more shocking. It should have been more disturbing one way or the other. And it didn't really commit to either. So, uh, Regardless, I did think it was better than average. Uh, as far as the intent goes, because of all the things that I wound up saying here, um, it was going for scary, it was going for shocking, it was going for disturbing. And even though the plot was better than average, I did feel like as far as the intent goes, it didn't live up to what it was trying to do. 12 out of 25 there. The acting I thought was honestly superb, um, especially Dylan McDermott as the father character. He was he played this extraordinarily well, um, from being the uh, scout master uh, you know, support system to being you know trying to be the cool dad and have the the awkward talks with his son kind of thing. Uh, I thought that it served very very well. I thought that he did a magnificent performance. Um, Charlie Plummer as Tyler did a great job as well. I really, really liked the acting in this one. It was something that really stood out. And as far as the technical goes, not a whole lot of special effects, body effects, makeup effects to be found here. But uh, as far as the technical goes, when we're talking about camera work, color work, uh, sound editing, editing itself, uh, I thought it was very tight. It was very adept, had really good long shots and slow pacing. This was not a mile a minute thrill ride. Uh, it was a slow burner, but I thought it achieved the effect that it was going for in that regard fairly well. Uh, if I had to give it any points off, which I did, it would be that it had a tendency to hop from, say, point A to point D without giving us B and C and then immediately afterward having flashback sequences which go over B and C but the thing is A and D were enough uh, as an audience we were in uh, I felt like we were intelligent enough to connect those dots to see that B and C were fairly ancillary and uh, by skipping ahead like that uh, we, you know, we were able to fill in the gaps just fine and we didn't need that flashback sequence. It felt like it was hand holding, uh, me at least when I was watching it in a totally unnecessary way. I, I was more interested in D get to the point. I don't necessarily, you know, now that I know that D exists and we're right here, I don't need to go backwards. Um, it had a tendency to do that. So that from an editing standpoint, I felt like that was a misstep. I felt like it just didn't need the, you know, it's, it's not like it was out of, you know, out of sequence. It just didn't need it at all. Uh, honestly, a and D were enough. Uh, but the, regardless, that gives us a total of 68 out of 100 points. I would recommend this movie. I did think it was interesting, not really scary and not really as shocking as it should have been, but well acted, interesting, a good dramatic film, even if it's not the best horror film. So that's it for the Clove Hitch Killer. I really thank you for joining me here today. If you like these videos, I welcome you to click like and or subscribe. Uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.